pretty empty in here. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, good morning. Luke. Book of Luke. Uh, chapter 2. We'll be in chapter 2. Luke, chapter 2. I will start in verse 1. It says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea uh, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, uh, because he was of the house of uh, of the house and lineage of David, uh, to be taxed with Mary's espoused wife, being great with child. Uh, and it's and so it was that while they were there, uh, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And they were, there were in the same country. Uh, Countryside, that is, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And then, lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring unto you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Uh, for unto you this day, in the city of David, a Savior, uh, or for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're in uh, Luke chapter 2. Uh, Luke chapter 2. Uh, there should be Bibles available underneath here. Okay, wonderful. Um, uh, verse, I'm sorry, verse 11. Okay, for unto you this day in the city of David uh, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now, uh, even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And then they came with haste, found Mary and Joseph and a babe lying in a manger, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Um, I guess you can continue reading on there, but that would, that's uh, up to where we're going to be looking at today. Uh, that when they had seen it, they had, in other words, so, yes, sir. Your mic isn't working. Okay. Hello? Oh. Okay. Wow. Hello? Just use this other one now. I'm not sure why that's not working for me. Okay. Um, all right. So we just read Luke's account of Christ's birth, uh, which is a little bit more detailed than what Matthew's account was. Uh, and Matthew particularly just points out his genealogy as well as what you have Luke. In first chapter, as well as that, he addresses something from a different perspective. Um, but this is pretty interesting what we have here with regard to the birth of Christ. Now, we're, um, <laughs> I spent a good part of the week uh, studying over and reading a book uh, called uh, Chronological Aspects of Life of Christ. Uh, interestingly, though, uh, Nothing was conclusive with regard to the fact as to whether or not Christ was born on the 25th. Uh, any, anything that I've researched or looked, 
Uh, at best, you can narrow down the window of when it was, which would be um, December, possibly January uh, time frame, but they don't, there's no specificity as to what, a date. They, they can't, no, nobody, uh, with regard to the prophecy or the, um, even counting back from the crucifixion, which is actually, that's, you, you, can, you have a lot more to kind of uh, corroborate with regard to the crucifixion than you do with regard to the actual birth. Uh, I know historically most Christians have ever, even going back as far as anything that you would read in first century, most Christians were most concerned with the fact that he was just born rather than as far as celebrating the date. And it wouldn't be until like 525 AD that it was actually in any way somebody wanted to have, okay, when was when was Christ born? And this uh, Catholic Church is already underway by a few hundred years at this point. Um, and so there was a there was a monk, uh, a Scythian monk, that had been tasked with going ahead and, and coming, fi basically establishing a calendar, uh, a liturgical calendar, and then they they wanted to have um, the birth of Christ be the beginning of the year rather than what they were using as their reckoning point prior to that. Uh, so they established, I guess, December 25th as being the case, but there wasn't anything conclusive necessarily, or at least I haven't been able to find um, with, with the readings that I've been doing, uh, as to it being that. Uh, what we do know is that he, it is historical record that he is born, he was born, uh, and that he specifically came to die. Uh, and we're told this actually here um, in this passage uh, as to the reason for his being born. Um, we're told um, when, okay, uh, the shepherds that were in the country abiding in the field, uh, keeping over their watch, uh, keeping, flock, uh, keeping watch over the flock by night. And verse 9, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around, shone round about them. They were so afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring unto you, it says here, good tidings of great joy. And he says something pretty interesting. He says, which shall be to all people. Okay. Now, I, I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, but who is he addressing at this point? Shepherds. Okay. What kind? What kind? Shepherds? Well, okay, I'm sorry. That's an improper Jewish. question. Yeah, they were Jewish shepherds. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was I was improperly phrased. Okay, so he's coming to Jewish shepherds, and he's telling them something that's now. Who would be looking for Messiah? The Jews, Jewish people. Yeah, but the angel of the Lord specifically gives them a message that says this is supposed to be to all people. This is good tidings of great joy, mind you. I understand that they've been looking for him for centuries, but this news is supposed to be something that rejoices the heart of all people because it's meant for everybody, not specifically Amen. the Jews alone. Okay, it's not supposed to be isolated just to, to, to the Jewish nation, uh, but it's, it's supposed to be to all people. Uh, we'll see that here in a little bit as far as the uh, other prophecy that uh, is given with regard to Messiah. And then he elaborates on this. He says, here's, here's his actual message. It says, for unto you this day is in the city of David uh, uh, is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So now, you know, Christ being significant to the Jews because he's the one that's been promised. If you go back as far as Genesis 3.15 and then look chronologically as far as all the different um, prophecies that were given with regard to Messiah as initiating at Genesis 3.15, and that is he is supposed to be if we go back to Genesis 3.15, it'd be, okay, he's supposed to be the one that's supposed to come from a woman, um, born of the seed of a woman, and he's supposed to bruise the serpent's head. Uh, now, his heel will be bruised, but he, he delivers the death blow to the serpent. Uh, we know in Genesis 50 that he's going to be of Judah's line, uh, that he's going to be a lawgiver. Uh, we see as well in Leviticus 18 that he's going to be a prophet of the people and like unto Moses. Uh, and then as well, beyond that, uh, we later see that he's supposed to be of the house of David, not just specifically Judah, but as well of David's house. 
uh, in other words, he's supposed to be from David's seed, David's line. And as well, uh, we see that, uh, well, fast forward, you go back, you go into Micah, and then he's supposed to be one that is born of Bethlehem. But his birth, even though he has a physical birth, it says that he's of old, of everlasting. So this is something that's unique. He's not just isolated to being, okay, born at a point in time, but this person has always existed. So uh, this is supernatural. <coughs> we see that as well in Isaiah, particularly in, in chapter 7 as well as chapter 9, that um, he's um, born of a virgin. So, and it's not, it's not just a young lady. As some, some people want to argue about it. In other words, it's, it's a, an actual virgin, somebody that hasn't known man. Uh, and uh, had you know relation with man, but as well that uh, his nature uh, being divine again emphasized that he's supposed to be wonderful counselor and mighty God. Okay, now this is a person that's going to be born named Mighty God, everlasting Father, and then you know Prince of Peace, and then of uh, his government. You know there shall be no end. The government's going to be upon his shoulder. And so the thing is, this is a unique individual. And, you know, we see this throughout, and we see it fulfilled uh, here in that the, the desire of nations, uh, he who has been looked for for all ages has finally arrived and finally come, uh, and this is good news. And he specifically named here, okay, obviously Christ, which is the Lord, uh, but as well he's called a Savior. And, again, I'm not trying to be a pedantic or insulting to anybody's intelligence. That's important because he's supposed to save people from their sin. In Isaiah 53, we're told with regard to him that he's going to be bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is going to be upon him by his stripes were to be healed, that it pleased God to bruise him, Amen. that he would die. But mind you, not for his sin because he would never commit sin. He doesn't even have sin nature. It's not even possible for him to be uh, a sinful individual because he was not born of man, but he was born uh, of a woman. He didn't have a human father, uh, so he couldn't have had sin in his nature whatsoever. Uh, but he would die on behalf of us, uh, you and me, and anybody to be born uh, future wise, so that we would have uh, reconciliation with God, we would have forgiveness of sin, uh, and then we would have our sin issue once and, all, once and for all taken care of. And uh, here, the angel of the Lord summarizes it. I bring unto you good tidings of great joy. Good tidings of great joy. This is good news. And it's supposed to rejoice your heart. And it's supposed to be really exciting because Savior is here. So now he, they, uh, and then now you have uh, as well, uh, just a few verses down, uh, following when you tell them the, how, what, uh, as far as the sign that you gave for them to be able to find, that you know, you're gonna find uh, a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger, and then the affirmation of the heavenly host. You know, verse 13, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, and they were praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. And then boom, they're immediately gone. Uh, if you go to verse 15. So that's kind of a magnificent thing, I would imagine. You're just all of a sudden you see this bright shining figure, and then he presents himself. Don't be afraid, you know, fear not. And then he gives like, oh, I got a message for you. It's good news, and it's to all people. He gives them the message, and then here's a sign that you get to find with regard to you finding Christ. And then all of a sudden you have this host of angel fill the sky, and then they praise God, cry out. You know, glory to God in the highest peace on, on, uh, on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. They're gone. They disappear. Hi, good morning. And then uh, we're in Luke chapter 2. Then the men go into town and they verify what was told them uh, by the angel. They find Mary, uh, verse 16, and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And then it says that when they had seen it, they had made known abroad the saying that was told them concerning this child. Um, now, of those that went, and actually it was revealed, I'm sorry, we're in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Um, basically, 
right, right now, like verses 15 through 17. Uh, <clears throat> of those shepherds that had seen it, how many were, I mean, there's no real way to know as far as how many were believing. How many of them were believers at this point? We do know that they were uh, presented a message. Uh, they were given a sign. They verified the sign, and then after they had seen the sign, they had gone into town to go ahead and make the message known that was told them uh, regarding the child that they found that was born. And that is this, you know, Messiah is here. This is Messiah. You know, this child is the one that we've been looking towards uh, that we have had prophesied to us for generations, for centuries, regarding uh, the issue of our sin. And then uh, they made it known abroad. Okay, so um, lesson for us with regard to that is that we as well, uh, this is good news. Now, mind you, we're many generations removed from actual Christ's birth. Uh, and beyond the fact, as far as his birth, also, you know, his life, his death, and then his resurrection as well. But it's still good news to all. It's still a good tiding of great joy to all uh, that we should, as uh, the wise men, or not the wise men, excuse me, as the shepherds here had done, that is to go ahead and make abroad known, uh, make known abroad the fact that you have a Savior that was born. Uh, and the re well, we know this, the reason why this is important is because we have an issue with sin. Okay, and so... Uh, that's again all affects all people. All people are um, in straits with regard to their eternal destiny until they get that settled with God. And then as well uh, for believers that maybe aren't living as they should, maybe aren't living uh, in light of the fact of what they've received from God. And that uh, not only is forgiveness a sin as far as okay, yeah, it settles your eternal destiny, but it's as well so that you would have God made us so that we would, you know, we. Uh, we're created into good works. But beyond that, is he wants a relationship with us. He doesn't want us to just remain, uh, well, not just idle, but rather he doesn't want us to, he, he wants a relationship with us. He wants He wants interaction with us. He wants us to pray to him. He wants us to be able to go ahead and have fellowship with him. And that's hindered if we have sin in our life. And so um, this good news isn't just isolated. I mean, obviously primarily it's towards those that are unbelieving, but as well as good news for uh, the believer, because we have not only just forgiveness of sin, yeah, to uh, have an eternal destiny in heaven, but as well as that we have forgiveness of sin now so that we can have unbroken fellowship. Uh, we can have unhindered, unhindered, unrestricted fellowship with God uh, so that as we walk in our life, you know, we can have uh, leading, guiding direction, uh, instruction, uh, that, that communion with him that he intended from the beginning. Cool. Yes. Ah, what does that mean? The glory of the Lord shone around about them. Why were they afraid? Oh, why? Um, all right, glory of the Lord is, in other words, God's, God's brightness, God's glory, like his, it's his manifest presence. It'd be as if when Christ manifests himself before Peter, James, and John at the Mount of Transfiguration. Now, mind you, this is before he went to the cross, uh, but he it's like he showed who he was, and he was a bright, shining figure. The best you can see is basically he's just this really bright individual. Uh, and it... Go to, well, you know what? Go to uh, Revelation. Go to Revelation chapter 1. This is another example of this as well. Go to Revelation chapter 1. Starting at verse 10, we're going to skip down a little bit. This is John the Apostle speaking. He would have been uh, James' brother, uh, one of the son of Barajanes. He would have been the one who wrote the, the Gospel of John and 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. 
Uh, so, okay, it says, I was in the spirit of the Lord saying, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. That or what thou seest, write in a book and uh, send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and, unto, and he goes on to name on all of them. And then verse 12, uh, I turned to see the voice and sp uh, that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Okay, in the midst of the seven golden uh, seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to the foot, girt about uh, the paps with a golden girdle. His head uh, and his hairs were white like wool and uh, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet uh, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice uh, as the sound of many waters. So it's like very booming. Okay. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went out a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And then this is his reaction, verse 17. It says, When I saw him, I <coughs> fell at his feet as dead. Okay? I, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And then it goes on and he explains, Okay, he laid his right hand on me, you know, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Now, this is the same John that if you read through in the Gospel of John and in the other Gospel accounts, uh, he would have ran towards the tomb with Peter after the resurrection. Uh, he actually leaned himself on Jesus' breast. Uh, he calls himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, that's how he referred to himself whenever he was writing. That, that's how the Holy Spirit, as far as recorded and preserved scripture that, that he wrote with regard to himself, as far as he said, okay, I'm the one that Jesus loved. Uh, he was one of the three that was able to see Jesus transfigured before him, you know, at the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, now, he communed day and night, you know, he accompanied with the others, uh, with the other 11, right? Uh, with Jesus for, what, the better part of three, three and a half years uh, while he was on earth. He was able to see Jesus uh, perform all the miracles that he did, and, the, you know, that as far as that he accounted, uh, bringing... Uh, you know, Lazarus back from the dead and others that were raised from the dead. He also had, uh, when uh, there was deaf, he made them to hear. He heard, uh, or he, he caused blind to see. He caused the lame to walk and, and all that. So this is the same person. And now, granted, this is already later in his life that he's seeing him as this. So you would think, okay, he has, you know, a pretty close relationship with him, right? So why is it that when he sees God... Now, mind you, this isn't the first time he's seen him, all right? And this isn't the first time he's seen him in his presence like this. But he sees him in this particular time, and he's manifest in his, in a, you know, in his glory. Uh, and his, what's his reaction? He says, I fall at his feet like a dead man. I was like, man, this is, <laughs> this is a frightening thing. Yeah? Uh, that... It tells him not to fear because it's a it's a frightening thing as far as like okay hey wow how often you know I mean granted perfect love casts out fear so it's you know but the the thing I mean even in Hebrews we're told that you know it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God God's manifest presence is something that is uh, we use well in scripture we use the word terrible and it means it's not as in it's a horrific thing, but it's it's like terror-inducing. It's something that is like, whoa, almost in a sense like earth-shattering because it's like, you know, can we handle that? Yes? It must be pretty uh, pretty strong. Because in the verse uh, 16 or 17, it says, uh, verse 16, His countenance was as the light shineth in his strength. Yeah, it's very bright. It must have been a strong light. Yeah, very bright. Very bright. Saul on the road to Damascus, it was it, some, you know, blinded him, basically. Well, temporarily blinded him, and then the scales fell off uh, following when he, ever, when he went to go see Ananias, as he was told. But, um, yeah, so in other words, okay, uh, does that answer your question? What's that? Yeah. Th does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so they, yeah, they were told not to fear just because <laughs> God's sight is very terrifying and terror-inducing. Uh, granted, he's, um, we're saved, we're born again, those that are believers, you know, 
uh, especially if you're right with him. Uh, but the thing is, it's like, hey, when you see God for who he is, you know, and then you see yourself in light of who he is, uh, most normal reaction is going to be like Isaiah. You know, woe is me. <laughs> I'm undone. Uh, and even this man, uh, you know, he, he penned scripture. And his, his reaction was to fall at his feet as a dead man. Uh, okay, so we have prophecy fulfilled. And then we also have the message uh, for us to proclaim, uh, that they proclaim. And then the example that was given as far as that they verified. And then from there, they went ahead and they broadcast the message that was given. That is that we have a Savior, that Savior's come. Okay, well, for us, it's a little different because we're looking back. Okay, Savior's already been come, and then he's already passed and then rose again from the dead. Uh, so sacrifice has already been given, and then so now uh, we're commanded uh, by him, uh, following uh, the instruction he had given to the apostles, uh, that we're supposed to be witnesses unto him, and that we're supposed to go to you know Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and on, on the most part of the world, and that lo, he's going to be with us even unto the end of the world, and then make make known his gospel, and then those that uh, believe we're supposed to baptize, and then. Uh, teach them to observe all things whatsoever he's commanded us uh, so but he initiates his pattern here uh, with angel of the Lord coming giving them the message lo a savior has come and then they go and they verify and then they they, they, they give the message um, go to Isaiah 53 Isaiah 53 chapter honestly but uh, we'll go down uh, verse 8 uh, he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was he stricken okay he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he hath done no violence, neither was any deceit uh, in, his, in his mouth. And then, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, and he hath made, and he hath put him to grief. In other words, God hath put him, uh, his servant, to grief. This is talking about Christ. And he hath put him uh, yeah, to grief. And then, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Uh, he shall seal the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. And then by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, uh, for he shall bear their iniquities. Okay, therefore will I divide with him a portion of the great, uh, or excuse me, with the great, and he shall divide uh, the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors and bare, his, and bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgression. Or for the transgressors. Okay, so uh, God's pleased with his servant's sacrifice here. And that's the only thing that God's going to accept with regard to uh, not only just sacrifice for sin, but also um, really forgiveness. And then also that's the only thing that satisfies God's holiness and God's justice. Uh, and as a result, uh, we can... Uh, you know, we can't rejoice. Or those of us that have forgiveness of sin, for those that don't, God is making available that offer. Uh, we're told in um, John 1 that he came unto his own and his own received them not, but as many as received them to them, gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that offer is still valid. Uh, he says that uh, if I and if I be lifted up, I will draw men unto myself. That him that cometh to, to, to Christ, in other words, cometh to me, him, uh, he will in no wise cast out. And so those that come to God uh, in faith, uh, 
believing on him as far as with regard to his gift, which is the offering, his offering, his, his, his giving his own life, uh, blood for forgiveness of sin, um, that you receive him and then you, in exchange, um, will receive his righteousness. He takes your sin upon you and then you receive forgiveness. And beyond that is that you'll also have new life because he didn't just stay dead. Is that he rose again from the dead three days later. And so God is satisfied and God is pleased uh, with his servant's sacrifice. Uh, and so this uh, message that the um, shepherds had heard and had received, uh, verified, and then they went ahead and broadcast, uh, is in reality really good news. Uh, and it's uh, something to, to rejoice in. Because, uh, again, we don't have to have... Uh, the penalty of sin upon us, uh, but rather we can we can we can get that all together taken care of if we come to Him. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Wow. Okay. Nobody have any questions. For next week, we're going to look at, with regard to uh, Festival of Lights, or Hanukkah. In John chapter 12, it is mentioned, though it's not mentioned by that name, uh, but it is mentioned as Festival of Lights, uh, which Christ celebrated. But um, how does that come into play, and what is it about? What does it mean? How is it, you know, what... Uh, Christ celebrated it, what's its significance? What does it have to do um, with God or worship of God? Go to, actually, yeah, it'd be, it's in John chapter 12 as far as where he uh, cries out and he's celebrating it. But, uh, no questions? Okay, all right, we're dismissing.